It was finally time to ascend from the cave. The sun shone brightly over my head and it took a moment for my eyes to adjust. I reached the top of the hill and placed a chest to store my items. I then crafted two furnaces for any smelting needs down the line, as well as another chest to expand my storage space. I placed the chest and furnaces and began smelting some copper and iron. I then went down to the village to collect some more wheat. I was hungry and in desperate need of a meal. I made a good amount of bread to get me through the next few days. It was about time that I started building my house, so I crafted up some sandstone from the sand I had collected so far. I placed a few more items in storage and was visited by my dear friend Stuart. I wanted to start growing my own crops so I could stop taking from the villagers. I dug out a small spot and tilled some soil. I then grabbed some water so the crops would always have a source of hydration. After that, it was time for bed. The next morning I walked down beneath the hill and began collecting more sandstone. It was going to be my primary building block, so I needed to ensure I'd have plenty. I crafted some smooth sandstone and cut sandstone to add some texture. I began to build up the perimeter wall and entrance to my base. I also used my stone cutter to cut some stairs and slabs for detailing. I added the stairs to the entrance and placed the slabs on top of the wall. I continued to work on the perimeter. I wanted to build a large courtyard to be able to safely walk around in, cultivate crops, and enjoy the open air. While building, I alternated between the cut, smooth, and regular sandstone to add some texture and feeling of coziness to the wall. I didn't want it to appear too uniform. I added more slabs to the top of the wall, leaving one space between each slab. As the day went on, I continued to build up the perimeter wall, alternating laying sandstone bricks. The sun was beginning to set and it was once again time to go to bed. I awoke the next morning and set out for some more sandstone. I needed to finish building up the courtyard walls and start building up the house I would live and sleep in. With my pockets full of sandstone, I rushed home to get building while the sun was still high in the sky. I started to build out the base perimeter of my house. I decided on cut sandstone as the first layer and smooth sandstone for the rest of the house. It would look sleek and stand out from the courtyard wall. Unfortunately, as the day progressed, the clouds rolled in and cast gloomy shadows. I continued to build as fast as I could. That is, until the husks appeared. At first I didn't see them creeping up on me, but as soon as I did, I was off to bed. When I woke up the next morning, they were still there. I had to put them out of their misery, and fast. Once I knew I was safe, I continued working on the walls of my house. I then built a set of stairs on the exterior. It didn't rain much here, so I figured it would be alright to have stairs outside. It would be a nice bonus to feel the evening breeze if I needed a snack in the night. After laying a few more stones on the second floor, I was exhausted and ready to sleep. It was time to collect a few more resources for building my house. First, I chopped down some more mangrove wood. Then I dug up some clay. I went back to my base and crafted the mangrove wood into wooden planks. 
I would use this as the flooring in my house for the first and second floor. I got some more smooth sandstone and continued working on the second floor. I was determined to finish the walls in the next couple of days so I could finally sleep safely inside. I used my pickaxe to break out parts of the walls and create windows. It's always nice to have a bit of natural light and a breeze. I crafted a few mangrove trapdoors and doors for the house. I added them to the first and second floor entrances and put iron bars on the windows for safety. I did some finishing touches on the upstairs walls and added the trapdoors to the stairs as a railing. It was time for bed. I felt hopeful that this would be my last night sleeping under the stars. In the morning, I picked up my bed and finally brought it inside. I still didn't have a roof, but I'd be done that soon enough. I placed my bed in the corner and set my spawn point. Back down I went yet again to collect more sandstone. When I returned home, I tasked myself with finishing the roof to my home. I laid down the sandstone and slabs on top for detailing. I had finally completed the house and sealed up any cracks. It was hard work, but at least now I had a roof over my head. I ran down to the swamp to collect a bit more mangrove wood. I'd need it to build some tables and other furniture for my home. By the time I had finished chopping wood, it was dusk. I was worried about mobs coming to get me after dark, so I ran home. Once I got inside, I jumped into bed. It felt nice to be in the comfort of my own new home. The next morning, I continued working on my courtyard perimeter. It had been days since I had started it, so I was determined to finish it up and finally complete the shell of my home base. Once the wall was completed, I made some mangrove wood planks to finish off the flooring in the house, as well as an iron shovel to dig up the crops to move them into the courtyard. I finished laying the wood floors and began digging up the sand in the corner of the courtyard to make a safe spot to grow wheat. For my garden, I need more dirt to grow crops, so I headed down to the marsh to dig up some dirt. Once I had collected enough dirt, I ran back up to my base to lay the dirt, till the soil, and plant my wheat seeds. I didn't have enough seeds, so back to the village I went to take a bit more wheat and collect a few more seeds. I didn't want to be rude, so I did replant seeds for the villagers. On my way home, I ran into Stuart again. He was looking cute and seemed to enjoy hanging out around my new courtyard. I placed the wheat seeds in the remaining tilled soil and had myself a little garden. All that was left to do was make sure the crops had a source of water. I had to make a couple quick trips down to the marsh to grab a few buckets worth of water. After that, it was bedtime.
Now that I had completed the walls of my base, I could get started on laying the courtyard flooring and adding decorations and workspaces inside of my house. I made some mud bricks and kept some packed mud, which I'd used together to make the floor. Spider webs and lily pads are cute decorations, so those went in the corners and in the pond. I dug out the sand in the courtyard to expand my wheat garden just a little bit more. I moved my furnaces into the courtyard and cut some stone to lay down in the wheat garden. I then grabbed some water in a bucket to fill up above the stones and keep my crops watered. After that, I crafted some mangrove wood stairs to fashion into a table. It was about time that I set up a permanent workshop to smelt, cut stone, and craft tools in the future. I crafted a few more items to use as storage and decoration. I placed the barrel on the wall to store resources and the iron trap doors beside it as a shelf. I realized I forgot to add a crafting table in the workshop, so I broke down the large table in order to make some room. I crafted up a couple of chests for extra storage and put them on the iron shelves to keep the space clean and clutter free. I made a couple more barrels to balance the space and make sure I had ample storage room to stay organized. I grabbed my clay and tossed it into the furnace to make bricks. And while I waited on the bricks, I made a cozy couch out of sandstone in the front corner. With three bricks ready, I made a planter. A house is really not a home until you have a house plant. I collected a cactus and plopped it in the pot. Off to bed I went. I was unsure of what tomorrow would bring, but I knew it was time to venture out and explore beyond this desert.